What's up, everybody? What are you doing right now? I'm repricing. Today's my repricing day. I've been repricing for maybe the past two hours. I got a meeting at 2.15, so I'm going to continue to reprice and then pop into the meetings, and then I got meetings till about 6 o'clock. And then that's it. It's a wrap for the day. How's business? How's everybody's business doing? You, you guys thriving or what? Tell me if you're thriving right now. I want to know if you're thriving or you're hurting. You're hurting. We got solutions for you. Hey, bro, I've been using Inventory Lab, and it's not working correctly. What workflow do you use? Um, yeah, so Amazon changed their send to Amazon workflow. Um, you could use 2D workflow. You can use... Um, Wizard Industries, those are two softwares we recommend um, from getting around the issue with Inventory Lab right now. 2D Workflow and uh, Wizard Industries. AMZ to the Moon asked how we continue to run the business while changing warehouses. Can you tell us about the process? So absolutely. The important part of a move is to have an overlapping lease. Right. So you're not pressed and you got to make the move in one weekend, you know, so you get an overlapping lease and then you start bringing inventory over first. Right. So the inventory flows into the new space and then you begin to bring production stations. So, for example, um, the last week we were moving into the new facility. You know, we brought on a Wednesday, we brought two production stations over. And then the following, the next Thursday, we brought another two production stations over. And then on the Friday, we brought the following production station over. So the workflow doesn't stop, right? Because at the end of the day on Wednesday, the production stations go to the new warehouse. And those employees, we tell them to show up at the new warehouse. So production keeps moving. That's the name of the game. You can't stop production. I mean, you can, but it's going to slow down sales. I'm on my way to fill my truck with an order, thriving, I love it. Making the most money of my life and not happy about my performance. Do you ever feel the same? Yeah, all the time. All the time. I was just feeling like that on the I went to the doctor this morning. I got a, a shoulder injury. And on my drive to the office, I was just thinking about this. I felt like, honestly, Vinicius, I felt like my life was falling apart. And my life is amazing. Everything is so good. I'm making more money than I ever made. I have the best relationship with my family that I've ever had. You know, I got a ride or die girl by my side. Um, I got friend. Like, everything is really good. But that fear comes in. And on the way to the office, I'm questioning, like, am I doing enough? You know, can I be doing better? And the answer to me is always yes. And for you, it should always be yes as well. Can you be doing better? Yes. Can I improve in this aspect of my life? Yes. 100%. So, Vinicius, you are not alone, my friend. Just getting started on on wholesale. Awesome. Let me catch up here. I have trouble with manual searching. I think more like time management, looking for new products. Do you have any recommendations? So, we, we, we source in a three- or four-step process. I'll, I'll cover the, the process right now. Um, so we, we suggest using some sort of UPC scraper, uh, tactical arbitrage, um, scan unlimited. There's a few other ones out there, right? So the first step in an order is reorders, right? So essentially you're reviewing your current catalog of inventory that you've stocked already in Amazon and you're re-adding those products that are running low on inventory. So instantly you're able to add a substantial amount of inventory to your order. Right, because it's a reorder. Let's say 50% of the products you ordered last time you reordered. Right. And then after the reorder, we go to the UPC scraper and we sort by highest profit first. Right. So we're adding all of the products that make us the most money onto that purchase order first. Right. So we start at the top, we work our way all the way down to our minimum buying criteria which for us is right around $2. For you, it might be different. Whatever your minimum buying criteria is, you work yourself down from maximum profit all the way to that minimum buying criteria. Right. So now you've done two product research techniques. You've done your reorder, and you've sorted and added all of the most profitable items in that catalog to your order. All right. Now here comes the third part. Because you got your reorder, you got all the ASINs you want to order, now you're going to do some freestyling, right? Where you're essentially diving a little deeper into the catalog, Juicera, and this is what we were just talking about in your question, um, and doing brand title searches, right? A lot of people, I was just talking to someone this morning, and what they were doing was literally copying the description from a 50,000 line item catalog into Seller Central, every single description. That's too much. It's too much. It's way too excessive, right? Stop doing that. 
copy the brand name, let's just say it's Mitchum deodorant, right? Instead of searching every description in the catalog, you know, Mitchum, um, Evergreen, 2.6 ounce, right? No, just search Mitchum and then cross-reference those with your catalog and you'll start adding more items to your order, right? So now you got the reorder, you got your highest profiting products, you did some freestyling. By now, in stage three, your order should be pretty substantial. And that's when you go to stage four. Now, stage four is when you take the products that are already on your order and you do multi-pack searches and variety pack searches, right? So we'll take it back to the Mitchum deodorant. You're already picking up the 2.6 ounce evergreen Mitchum deodorant, right? But you're only getting the two pack because that's the, the, the UPC that was connected in the catalog. But you missed the three pack, you missed the six pack, you missed the 12 pack, you missed the 18 pack. So that's when you go back and you do those searches and you add those additional pack sizes to your order. And by the end of that four-step process, you should have a substantial order. And if you don't have a substantial order, it's one of two things. Either you're lacking the skills in your product research methods and you need to hone in on those and get better at that, which we show you step-by-step step in East LSRI, or you don't have good suppliers. It's one of the two, right? And now keep in mind, whenever a catalog is sent to you from a supplier, it's not the final price. It's not the final price. People message me all the time, Eric, I can't make money in wholesale. These catalogs I'm getting, they're, the prices are too high. Like, that's not the final price. Negotiate, 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 negotiate. I love questions like this. Like, here, here we are. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you some nuggets to get there, right? But let, let me explain this question here. So quick summary on what it takes to get from 100K to 500K months. So Homeboy, what's four times 12? Homeboy wants to grow, you want to grow your business, Sosa Bush, by $4.8 million, you know? And your question is coming in the form of a, a completely free answer. So we're going to give it to you, right? But keep in mind, there's only so much value I can provide in, in the next minute or two from the difference between a $100,000 a month business and a $500,000 a month business. So... $100,000 a month business, you know, you could essentially do that with one, maybe two employees. It's very easy to operate. There's not many systems, right? Obviously, you need to understand your net profits, what it costs you to get a product out the door, all of the fundamentals to owning a business. Now, there's a big difference between a $100,000 a month business and a $500 a month business, right? The $100 a month, $1.2 million a year, $500,000 a month, you're talking $6 million a year. So it's a 6x growth in your company. In order to do $500,000 a month, you have to have systems and teams. You have to. You have to. And whether you're using a prep center, your teams would be buying, right? Buying, um, account health, managing your SKUs, repricing, right? Because you don't have a warehouse to manage. But if you have a warehouse to manage, now you're going to need pickers, right? You're going to need pickers to pick the products, to deliver them to the prep stations, to pack the products, right? And then you're going to have to have a shipping team to get the products back onto the truck after they've been unloaded, counted, discrepancy report, prepped, and sent into the shipping area, right? So the difference between a million-dollar a year business and a $6 million a year business is all about your systems. It's all about your infrastructure internally. That's what's going to take you there. Now, obvious. You need access to good products, you need uh, strong supplier relationships, and you need to understand the product research process in order to make that jump. But the biggest integral part of getting from a million dollar a year business to a five or six million dollar a year business is your team and your systems, without a fucking doubt. And that's why we focus so much on teams and systems in Inner Circle, right? Because these are already seven-figure business owners, you know, and they're trying to grow by millions of dollars a year, right? So they come to us so we could help them implement these systems that I'm talking about because each business is so different, right? Like if I was to implement my exact same system into your business, it probably wouldn't work. Now, will some of my systems work in your business? Absolutely, fucking lutely they will, right? And then will others have to be slightly tweaked to fit, fit your infrastructure, yeah, they will be, right? And that's what's so cool about Inner Circle because we literally get to go to these people's warehouses, right? We learn about their businesses and then we make changes to their companies, right? Based on data, you know? So we're not just throwing shit at the wind here. Like, it's like, no, you need to do this so this can happen in order for this result 
to come out the other end. Uh, more capital. So more capital is a struggle for a lot of Amazon sellers. You have a few options for more capital. You said besides Amazon lending. So for anybody who doesn't know what Amazon lending is, um, Amazon offers loans, you know, lines of credit as well as um, loans so you can grow your capital and invest more money into inventory. But this gentleman's asking or woman's asking besides Amazon lending. So number one would be credit cards. You want to leverage credit. You know, early on in our business, we had four or five credit cards. You know, we practically maxed them out every month and we'd repay them. A great credit credit card is the Amex Plum card. It has a 60 day grace period. So it essentially allows you to sell out your inventory um, and pay back the invoice with the money you made from the sale of the product. Another option is lending offers from banks, right? So you go to the bank that you've been doing business with for many years and you can ask them for what loan opportunities they have, right? So they'll have private lending opportunities and then they'll have something called an SBA loan, which is a private loan backed by the government, right? These are all options, right? Another option is family, friends, investors, right? So if you got a family member or a friend who's looking to put some cash somewhere to make them some cash, you know, they can give you ten, twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars and you could set up a term where whatever you're paying them six percent, right, on the loan money. And then you could set up a, a some sort of payment structure to get that funds back to them. So there are options for funding and then there's also lending companies like eight fig, sellers funding. These are all lending companies that partner with people just like you and I to give us money so we could grow our business. Now, if you're having trouble getting lending and you need more cash into your business, something you could do is go to your inventory planning on Amazon and see how many inventory turns you have a year. If you have less than 12 turns a year, that means on average it's taking your inventory over 30 days to sell, right? So decreasing or Increasing your turns on an annual basis will provide you quicker turnaround on your inventory to pump more cash back into your business, right? Because the difference between eight turns and 16 turns is massive. You know, you're getting eight times the amount of flips out of your 16 turns versus your eight turns. And 365 divided by eight is so you're, if, you're, if you're doing eight turns, you're averaging about 45 days in stock. Your average product's in stock for about 45 days. But if you're doing 16 turns, your average product's in stock for about 22 days, right? So you're moving that inventory much quicker, right? And you're getting the cash back into your business. And the last thing you can do, and Ted, our CFO, used to do this with us all the time, is... Um, you know, once once every other week, he'd come into my office. He said, "Hey, Eric, we our check our check comes on Sundays, right?" So he'd be like, "Hey, Eric, we got a it's a Thursday. Our check's coming on Sunday. You know, we need we need to make this check a little bigger. So let's go through our inventory, look at our products that are at our ceiling price, see where we could drop that ceiling, maybe decrease our margins a little bit, but sell more items, and then look at products that are stuck at the floor price to liquidate that inventory to get some cash back into the business." No, we don't do uh so we do do OA but we've we we've taken OA to a whole new level here at Amazon Lit. We 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 essentially turned the OA business model into a wholesale business model. Where now we walk into stores and I don't even want to look at the aisles. I want to talk to the manager. Who's the manager here? All right? Or who's the, is there is there a uh and if it's a smaller store you know, you definitely want to connect with them because you could turn those retail arbitrage relationships into wholesale relationships where essentially you're just saying, hey, what kind of what kind of inventory you have? The manager sending you an inventory file, same way you would from a distributor or supplier. You're scraping that file. You're sending them the order. They're preparing the order. And now all you're doing to, is going to the retail store and picking up that order, right? This especially works great for some of the club stores, Sam's Club, BJ's, Costco, stores like that. Absolutely fucking crush. Um, what are your minimum requirements when looking at a warehouse? Uh, so definitely prefer to have a dock door. I prefer it has raised ceilings because square footage is what raises the price of rent, right? But vertical space doesn't raise the price of rent. You know, unless you start having multiple floors, 
but for one story building with a lot of vertical space it does not increase the square footage so you could you could get a huge bang for your buck by adding racking systems but also you got to keep in mind david you're not a storage facility either you're essentially you need to treat your warehouse like a trans stock right where it's in one door and out the other because if you don't start treating it like a trans stock you're going to get backup of of products right and i understand a little bit about your business um you know, so you got to consider how much space you're operating now. I always suggest first warehouse. Um, you know, it depends on really where you are revenue wise and employee wise, because you can definitely operate a multi million dollar business out of a 2,000 square foot warehouse, right? But the thing with warehouse leases are you're locking yourself in from usually five years, right? So when you invest in that 2,000 square foot warehouse, you can't have short vision. You can't just be thinking about the next six months, the next 12 months. You need to ask yourself, is this going to be a location that I could scale into for the next four to five years, right? And also something to consider is partnering with some of these large um, real estate firms that own multiple properties because a lot of times you cannot break your lease without substantial um, fees associated with breaking that lease. But what these big real estate companies will do right, is because they have so many properties, you can essentially upgrade to a new property and leave your old property right, because it's owned by the same ownership. So you're not having to, they're just essentially moving your lease to the new location. Now in the new location, will you have to possibly extend your lease? Yes, right? So a few requirements, dock door, high ceilings, you know, depending on the size of your business, um, I would need more info on that to, to suggest a couple square feet um, or how, how many thousand square feet. So David, just give me some more info on, on what you're doing right now monthly. I mean, I could check my notes. I know we had a call recently, but it'd just be easier if you tell me. Yeah. And Venetius just brought up a huge point for cash, net terms, right? If you're having trouble getting uh, cash investments, ask your suppliers for net terms. Net terms essentially means the vendor loans you the inventory for, if it's a net 14, they loan it to you for 14 days before you have to pay it back. If it's a net 30, they give it to you for 30 days before you have to pay it back. A great account is a net 45. Net 60 is even harder to come by, but if you get a net 60, you're rolling in cash. How would you tackle a wholesale without a warehouse? Prep center. As someone, uh, yeah, brand to brand relationships. It's gonna to be tough with brand to brand relationships, right? It's like wholesalers, they don't really care where they're sending the inventory. But if you're trying to partner with a brand, it's gonna be a little more challenging, uh, but it's not impossible, right? Someone just joined the inner circle about uh, three weeks ago. They do $30 million a year. They don't have a warehouse. They only use prep centers. Only use prep centers. $30 million a year, 10 or 11% net profits. That's massive. Um, there's a few different levels, New Louie. It ranges from a used minivan to a real estate investment property in the Midwest. You know, our first package is uh, about 16K and then top tier inner circle is six figures. I don't really have any thoughts on the new API for shipping. Um, there's softwares that get around it, 2D Workflow, Wizard Industries, uh, Source Correct. Should I grow my business to a certain size before getting help from Amazon Lit? No, no, it's like, it depends on how quickly you wanna grow. The sooner you invest in the program, the quicker your business will grow. It's just straight facts, right? It's proven. The people who show up and are accountable attend the, the live weekly coaching. Like, think about it like this. How valuable to all of you would six months of live calls with me be, right? Every single Monday night, super valuable. You can ask any of your questions the same way we're back and forth now, except you don't have to type the questions. You can literally voice them on a live Zoom call every single Monday, right? The value in that is worth 3,000 bucks alone. It's worth way more than that, way more than that, 10 times that, right? Because people take the information that's in these sellers or I, they implement it to their business and their business grows four to five X in 12 months, you know? And that's at a larger side. If you're smaller, your business can grow 40 to 50 X in 12 months, you know? Especially if you're just getting started and you're only doing, you know, five, six, seven thousand $7,000 a month. There's no reason by the end of the year you can't have a six figure a month business. 
absolutely no reason. How can we check if a distributor is legit? Hop on a phone with them, send them some emails, check their communication. That's going to that's going to tell you how how legit the distributor is. If they're non-responsive to emails, they don't pick up their phone, they send you a catalog disappear for 3 weeks. Those are the distributors you want to stay away from. Oh, heads up too, April 15th, which is tomorrow, uh long-term storage fees goes up. Um, so they are essentially doubling the monthly storage fee for inventory that's been in Amazon for 181 days to 270. That monthly storage fee is essentially doubling. And then the 271 to 365 days is 2.5 Xing. Um, so it's now even more important to get a grasp on your inventory management more important today than it ever was before. And listen, peep these out, right? Like this is what, I wanna ship you these. Like look at these, look how fucking cool these are. Like look at this, it's the 10K. This is like the proof of concept. When you first get this, you're like, holy shit. Like this is possible, I can build this, right? And then you keep grinding it out. You keep grinding it out and you get this bad boy, right? And now you're like, wait, I got a $600,000 a year business, like, this is pretty cool. I might even be able to quit my job, right? And then boom, you upgrade to this bad boy, the 100K. You know, and now you're like, definitely I'm quitting my job. Fuck this job. This job sucks. I'm selling on Amazon full time. You know, I'll make a million bucks a year. I got a million dollar business. Obviously not profit, it's revenue. And then you bump over to here, right? And now you got the 500K a month trophy. Now you're doing some big numbers. You operate a $6 million a year business, right? You're crushing it. You're fucking paying for your family's trips. Your car's paid off. You got no student debt anymore. You're really crushing the game right here, 500K, right? And then you start to skyrocket. Your business really starts to grow, right? Right around here is when you join Inner Circle, right? Right around between these two is when you join Inner Circle, right? And then your business really starts to fucking skyrocket. And now you're unstoppable, you're thriving. But at this point, new complications come into play at these two trophies, right? New complications. Now you need to build teams. You need to build systems because operating a 500K a month business is much different than operating a 100K a month business. We just talked about that, right? And then after you get this rocket ship trophy and you're really crushing it, then you get this bad boy. Right, this is the $2 million a month award. This thing is beautiful. Now this, and this, is when you're really, when your life really gets to change. And these three, right here you're grinding it out. Here, you're fucking hustling. Here, this is when lifestyle changes begin to happen. This is when you begin to buy that dream home you always wanted, right? This is when you begin to travel the world and enjoy life, enjoy the fruits of your labor, you know? And when you're right around here, in between here and here, you join Inner Circle, right? Inner Circle, Inner Circle is what will help you level up. Inner Circle is what will help the business that's here get to here. Inner Circle is what will help the business here get to here. Inner circle is what will help the business here get to here, right? And then e-sellers RI will help your business get to here, it will help your business get to here, and it will help your business get to here, right? E-sellers RI, inner circle. Boom, just like that. And that's the science behind the magic we've created. And now in this program right here, we got 800 people, over 800 people, about 850, right? And because I ship them all their awards, I know exactly how much revenue they do in monthly sales revenue, right? And right now it's about $450 million a year in sales revenue, e-sellers or I community does, right? And Inner Circle makes up about half of that, makes up about half of that. So our Inner Circle does about $220 million a year. 35 to 40 businesses requirement, three requirements to be in a circle. First, you have to be an e-seller's RI, right? So first, you have to be an e-seller's RI to be in a circle. Second requirement is you have to operate a million dollar business. So usually right around here. And the third requirement is you must be awesome. And if you meet those requirements, 
you operate a seven figure business, you're in eSellers or I, and you're awesome, then send me a DM, we hop on a call, discuss in a circle the benefits, the cost, the price, and get you onboarded so you can get one of these in the mail in the next couple months. Because I want to ship you one of these. I want to send you one. I really do. And those things ain't cheap. <laughs> those things are not cheap. I'm about to take a, uh, a page out of Russell Brunson's book and do an application fee to start shipping those. Because those trophies, some of those bigger ones, like 250 a piece, 200 bucks a piece, you know. But I think you deserve it. Like if you're willing to dedicate yourself to a business for 18 months, 12 months, 24 months, put in the work, invest in a program, you deserve one of those. If you've reached one of those milestones. I'm fucking excited to ship you one of those. I can't wait to get one in your hand. I've been in the business for about a decade, grinding it out, you know? Let me let me preface this before I get into it. So, happens all the time. Let's just say uh, you've been selling a product for a little while, right? And you have 60 units left in stock. Cost of goods, 10 bucks, right? So 60 times 10, you got $600 of inventory worth of stock, right? But when you look at the profits, you run the numbers and you realize you're breaking even or you're even losing money, right? So you keep your floor price at the price that it's at and you don't make any sales because you're scared to make money. But what you need to do is expand the picture. Look at the entire life cycle of that listing. And let me show you an example here, All right? So, so here's the example. So you have 60 units in stock with low sales, right? So they're not moving. $10 an item, so that's $600 in cost of goods, right? The estimated days of inventory at the current velocity is 225 days, right? So you're getting a sale about every 45, every four days. So these, these 60 units would take you about 225 days to sell through, right? At price to sell 60 units in stock, the profit will be 20 cents per sale. So you're only making 20 cents per sale, but here's where a lot of people make a mistake. So let me zoom this out a little bit, right? So when you look at here, let me actually scroll this down here so you can't see the rest. So here, you look at the 30 days, right? You got eight orders, $8 in gross profit, dollar per sale, right? But then you expand a little wider and you look at 60 days. 22 orders, $27 in gross profit, $1.23 profit per item, right? And then you expand even bigger, 90 days. You look at your orders, you sold 94, you made $152 in gross profit, which is $1.62 per sale. Then you expand it even further, you look at the last 180 days. You did 619 orders, $1,826 in profit, average profit per sale, $2.95. Now you look at year to date, right? Past 365 days. This is when the magic happens. You sold 1,451 orders for a total of $6,628 in profit and a, a total estimated profit per item sold of $4.50, right? So you're so focused on making this 20 cents per sale on these last 60 units that you're gonna keep them in stock for the next six fucking months while they collect storage fees instead of dropping the price and realizing you already made $6,600 at an average profit of 4.57 per sale, which is a fucking game changer, but you're too caught up on this 20 cents per sale that you didn't, you didn't, you failed to, to, to expand the giant picture, right? So doing things like that is really what's gonna help you level up, right? Because I do this shit all the time. That's literally what I was doing when I got on this call. I'm going through our inventory, I'm expanding a 365 day view, and I'm dropping prices on products that we already made a bag on. Because right now they're just collecting dust. And with the six month storage fees going up, the 271 day storage fees going up, you gotta get rid of that inventory, my friend. I appreciate all y'all. I'm sure you got some value out of this. If not, pop into the next one. I'll be live this Sunday, Sunday sessions, back live. Shit got a little crazy. I was at ASD, Anaheim. It was my mom's birthday a couple weeks ago. Then it was Easter. Haven't done a Sunday sessions in over a month. We'll be back on the Sunday sessions this Sunday. We'll see ya. I don't have a di direct time. Turn on notifications on YouTube, on Instagram, so you know when we go live and you can get nuggets like this. And if you want to join the community, Inner Circle, East Sellers or I, send me a DM. We'll jump on a phone call, get you on the team. Have a beautiful day. Stay grateful and stay lit.